we're in game. All right, guys, hello and welcome. We are here with the grand final for the Escape Gaming Masters. And some people might be feeling a touch of deja vu right now because once again, it is the Viper and Doubt. We saw this already in the Battle for Angkor and we're gonna see it again. Now, a quick throwback to the Battle for Angkor grand final. It was the same tournament format uh, for the main stage and uh, the Viper won a 3-0 victory over Doubt. Once again, Doubt coming from the winner's bracket will have the home map choice here. His map is of choice is going to be C-Notes, which is what we're seeing now. And I'm once again joined by T90 Official and Nilpford. And I'm going to throw it over to T90 now to introduce the sieves and the uh, you know positions on the map and all that good stuff. On the left, we have Doubt in the blue playing as the Indians, a civilization that Viper has used well in this event. I like his map with the exception of the forward golds here. I mean, it's a very open base for him. He does have the wood line on the left, the wood line above. One thing I noticed about this map in general is that it is quite open. But we've definitely said that before. We look at Viper's map now. He has a wood line above his TC and to the left and below as well. Maybe he can close this off a little bit better. And he does have his main gold to the right of the TC, which is technically behind if you compare it to Doubt. Apart from that, the resources are standard. The deer for Viper, he could lure in. I have to go back to Doubt. Sorry, making things difficult on Zach. And Doubt's actually luring them in as well. So, very interesting sieves. And we talked about how well Viper utilized Indians. He would go scouts, and then in the castle age, he would transition into the skirmishers and the camels. The shoe's on the other foot now, Zach. It's going to be really exciting to see what they do. Yeah, exactly. Viper here taking the Vietnamese, and if you just watched the last series between Viper and Slam, it was the Viper on the Indians, Slam on the Vietnamese, and now we've got Doubt on the Indians, Viper on the Vietnamese. It's going to be interesting to see how he plays it differently, because I feel like the Indians are an incredibly strong sieve, and as we were saying in that last game, they have so many great counter units available to them that... You know, the real strength of the Indians, I feel, comes in the late game when they can get their gunpowder and their, like, post-Imperial army. But until that point, they have all of the counter units they need to deal with basically everything. They they can hold out. They can turtle up. And if we think back to the previous games where we've seen Doubt, what has Doubt's primary strategy been? Boom. Every single game, he's really taken booming and ran with it. And, and usually until the Imperial Age even, playing incredibly passively and booming up. And if there was any sieve out of this entire pool, which would be more suited to that, well, it would be the Indians. I agree. And it's funny we had this conversation and now I think we're going to see something different from Viper. You know how I said, or sorry, you said that Viper never goes forward. And then, of course, he went forward. But... They both have similar styles here, and, and Viper tends to play rather passive on the aggression front and likes the boom and Pizzico as well. I think Viper will think he has the edge in the Feudal and Castle Age. If it gets to Imperial, he's probably not as comfortable. He may be the aggressor here as he's playing a player who plays his style. I just want to point something out real quickly. Look at Viper's Lumber Camp. That is terrible. <laughs> that is so bad. He can only use two villagers on that lumber camp. <gasps> I didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh! What is he that's doing? That's one of the worst lumber camps. That's one of the worst lumber camps I've ever seen. That is until he chops those trees. Yeah, that is probably the worst lumber camp in a pro game I have ever seen because he cannot access. He can only chop with two villagers. And now I don't know if he's realized this, but his wood income, has. his wood income is going to be absolutely messed up now for the early stage of the game, because that one villager is just idle. And he, it's, it's not going to show as idle, because he's technically still working by trying to get to the lumber yeah. camp. So, uh, Viper, that horrible, horrible start on the wood. And I don't know if that's going to affect things too much, but if he was planning for early aggression in a barracks, who knows how lo late that barracks is going to be now. It's In fact, oh, I, oh, I can tell you, it's already gone 6 minutes 30. <laughs> that's the normal barracks yeah, placement it's... time for a drush. Yeah, it, he's... I don't know if he was trying to drush, but if no, he was, yeah. that's not going to be in the back of his I, mind I think, now. I think he I think sent the Dow... fourth villager to wood a bit late to do the drush anyway, but this lumber camp is such yeah. a pain in the ass, I swear. That's so bad. It just hurts to see. I think Doubt will be going scouts anyway. I think Viper may go toe-to-toe -to -toe with scouts, actually. Yeah, this could be awesome. It's going to be really hard to go with a flush, but 
I okay. So one thing I like about doubt, I've seen a lot of doubts play in Arabia, and this is actually very similar to Arabia. Doubt does feudal all ins, and they're enjoyable. Like doubt, and sometimes yeah, yeah. Yo would do them successfully. So doubt may pull a slam in this game if he thinks he has the opportunity to do so. When I say pull a slam, I mean pull a slam in game one of the losers bracket finals, which we just witnessed between Viper and Slam, where he went all in on scouts. Doubt has clicked up now to the feudal age at 22 pop and Viper actually very similar times doing yeah. the same thing. I doubt also making small mistakes here. He's only got two villagers gathering from the boar and four villagers gathering from the turkey next to it. Again, it's just these tiny things to me uh, that shouldn't really be happening at this level, I feel. Uh, there's absolutely no reason not to have all of your villagers on that boar there because they gather so much faster. You're going to have much more food in the bank. Well, not much more, but it's at this level, those small differences really add up. Yeah. Uh, and that's the kind of thing where that might be 20, 30 extra food, which means Doubt's going to have a stronger um, scout rush. And and I feel like these players should be picking up on these small things, but I'm really not happy with da da Viper's wood line. It's going to get better as time goes by, but I do think that both players... Uh, well, it seemed to me like they were going to scout rush, but Viper there adding in a militia right now. Yeah. He's actually going to go for the mana arms, it seems, with two villagers now going to the gold. But Doubt has scouted it, and that wow. is really valuable information at this stage. And Viper also knows he's scouted it as well. He's chasing him down. Mm -hmm. And wasn't that just perfect timing? If he came in two minutes earlier and was like, okay, is he has he collected that 10 gold? He wouldn't have found anything, but he's coming in now and it's impressive when players can do this we're just talking about how they're slipping up on the small things well that's a big thing and the feudal age upgrade just hit for both players yeah absolutely viper here moving out across the map with his militia right now um i think someone in the chat said that he it was actually better to take the turkey rather than the boar but that's absolutely 100 percent not true um <laughs> so I don't know. Sorry, but I don't know how you could possibly think that's the case. Um, anyway, it's stable coming up for doubt right now, and uh, he's going to get it up in time. Thankfully, Viper could have been here sooner with these militia, but Stout will get the stable up. The villagers are going to run back now to the TC. Uh, not going to lose anything there. That was that's kind of good for doubt here, and that stable. It's quite far forward. I wonder if Viper would be tempted to come forward now because of this. They're very close. That's one thing I wanted to say. It was in the back of my mind, but we talked about so much turkeys and boars and which is better and all that stuff. So I didn't have a chance. <laughs> but uh, seriously, Doubt has walled the back of his base, but the front is very exposed. It's where his gold is, remember. And Viper's not far away from him. The man at arms, they have an early advantage against pretty much anything. Doubt recognizes that. And he's trying to put up an archery range, but this is really cramped for Doubt. Yeah, Doubt right now, I like the way he's walled this, actually, making that funnel towards the TC. He, rec he w What I think he wants to do, because look how far forward his gold is here, he would really like to wall out here in front where, where these gold mines are, but he can't do that because, well, the pressure's on, and yeah, it's too risky to send the Vils out now this army's here. Meanwhile, Viper's going to town on this uh, on this stable. Let's remember, of course, that these Men at Arms get additional uh, bonus attack versus buildings in the expansions. Uh, this stable's actually going down. Doubt, though, on the counter attack now with four scouts. He's looking for an opening or an opportunity at uh, Viper's base. He'll find it. There is a, a hole there. And meanwhile, this stable could actually fall, at which point Doubt will have already made the scouts, but it's still less than ideal. Yeah, it's true. You might want that later on, especially as Indians in the castle age toss out some camels or something. But for now, I think Doubt is just going to have to make the most of his scouts as they run in. Going to try and find some villager picks, Zach. And he looks like he's going to get one before that, uh, that before that spear moves in. Doubt needs to just get out the way, but actually, no. He's actually going to take the fight there and focus fire on the, the, the spearman. That might have actually oh, been the better choice. Yeah, because that way he doesn't have to deal with multiple spearmen later. He can just deal with one at a time. Really nicely done. One villager down, one uh, spearman down, and he's coming in with another scout now, and he's going to turn back around with the reinforcement, immediately focusing on the spear with a bit of micro. He shouldn't take... Yeah, there you go. Shouldn't take too much losses. Actually throwing away his two weak scouts there, and now he's going to find another... Wait, no, he won't. There's not a hole. I thought that was a hole. Viper just walled this villager in. <laughs> yeah, she's... But she's, she's essentially... Trapped. Yeah, she, she's trapped. She's idle. So 
the interesting transitions here. Viper still, I'm, I'm looking at what he's doing. All I see is three men at arms and spears. That's it. He hasn't gone for an archery range. Meanwhile, we have two archery ranges for doubt and that blacksmith. So he's going to go for a ton of skirmishers and probably go into the fletching upgrade and then push out to this gold, which is what he so badly needs. But I like what he's yeah. doing with his scouts. Viper is so distracted. I absolutely agree. that This counterattack was so worth it. Okay, yes, Doubt did lose his stable. But the value in creating the distraction and bringing Viper's army back home, exactly as you said, allows him to come forward with these buildings and start securing this area of the map a bit more. I'd like to hear a bit of Nilpford's take on this at the moment. Uh, how do you feel like Doubt's position is right now as he moves across the map with these skirms? I think Doubt will keep up his aggression here, going for more skirms, going for fletching, and the Viper seems to be trying to go for a very reasonable, maybe even too fast, Castle Age approach here. Only now got up his archery ranges, no blacksmith around, and not sure if he can finish those wards in the south, and if Doubt get in there, he can keep up the productions now on gold as well, and skirms and archers against only villagers. Hmm, let's see how Viper will get out his, yeah, units to defend. Yeah, Viper quick walling off. That was pretty successful for him, but he will lose this army potentially. Obviously, the skirmishes are very bad at fighting against the Man at Arms, but now that the spearmen are dead, uh, Doubt can utilize his scout cavalry here and clear this up. So I think Doubt's feeling pretty good. He has got the map control. And what's Viper's response going to be? As you said, I mean, maybe he could turtle a bit here and, and go for a reasonable castle time. Uh, if we look at Doubt's economy, it looks like he's just committing to making skirms and now switching into archers. But I'd still be a bit worried for Doubt. I, I still feel like his map is really not ideal especially when it comes to taking gold and he has to yeah. really keep this aggression going otherwise he could lose access to gold completely and that that could be really ruining the game for him this might be where you'd want to put a preemptive tower up on that gold you yeah. might want to think about that at least yeah exactly this um, is where a preemptive tower makes sense because unlike slam's tower last game doubt's actually planning on taking the gold you know he needs yeah, the gold I, yeah I can't help but think that Viper has been comfortable throughout all of this. He's going with his own skirmishers now. Obviously, if Doubt still had that stable, Viper would know, and he'd say, you know what, this isn't going to be good for me out here, but that stable's gone down, and it's going to be hard for Doubt to create more scouts. Interesting engagement coming up. I'm comparing upgrades and fletching for both. Are some archers in there for Viper, though? And I, I mean, sorry, for Doubt. And I think Viper's going to go back. Yeah, but Doubt, Doubt has He's so numbers. safe. Who Viper here? Yeah, his base itself is it, it yeah. locked down. I think mm. he can always retreat to his TC. So I don't think he's too worried. He just needs to be careful not to lose his units. Yeah, he's gonna micro back. I mean, he's outnumbered by about six units, I think. But some of those are back at Doubt's base, so it's not quite uh, as badly uh, one-sided as it might be at this front line. And Viper, of course, has the reinforcement advantage as well, and that's always something really important to keep in mind. This scout, though, actually disrupting things quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but you really see just how badly these units perform without ballistics, and that's why that technology is so valuable. You just see so many of these javelins in the floor because they missed. All it takes is just to move your army around a bit and suddenly your enemy can't hit you. So Viper actually able to push out on this. Some of these skirms are very low, but I think the same could be said for Doubt's army as well. And, uh, oh, maybe not actually. Doubt is looking a little healthier here. So the numbers could be m misleading. Uh, Doubt looking about even on numbers also, in this fight, but Viper with less HP overall. Yeah, I think... Doubt's going to be clicking up the Castle Age well ahead of Viper, too. I saw Viper had like 300, 400 food or something, mm. and I was like, wow, this looks yeah. promising then for him. But then he did plus one defense. Course, exactly. And then he created a lot more skirmishers, and it seems like Doubt just had more villagers for so long. It's really paid off for him here. He just needs to hold his advantage. He's on his way to the Castle Age. He's building a stable. But, Nilly, what do you think of the stable spot? Like the location Again. Of it. Again. <laughs> it would have been so much better if it was further back. But I think... Viper cannot really go for it anyways, but 
Yeah, exactly. When I to. say this, he might be going for it nonetheless. No, <laughs> I, he wants to because he's done the plus one defense. He wouldn't do the plus one defense if he wasn't looking for an engagement right now because he knows that, he, okay, he might be a little bit outnumbered, but if he has the upgrade advantage, he could take the fight anyway. Uh, right now, though, we do see Doubt just holding onto the hill, and by doing that, Viper just can't comfortably take a fight. He also sees that um, Doubt is actually making a lot more archers now, and so he's going to anticipate Doubt making more archers, and in return, he's going to make archers and maybe more skirmishes himself. In reality, we know that Doubt's adding the stable, um, but let's not forget the Indians do not have knights. They do not get knights, so the best they can yep. do is camels, and they're not as effective versus skirms, and they're certainly not as effective at raiding either. So the decision to keep making archers from doubt is, in my opinion, the best decision he could make here. I think we'll see a good mix, mm. because we've seen this so many times this tournament. Elite skirmisher, crossbow, and knights and camels. This is not something that is rare. And Viper's trying to buy himself some more time. He has done that. He's going to run his skirmishers back, and he's been walling up, Zach. If you look, he built oh, a gate yeah, there. Wow. He's going to send his skirmishers <laughs> back home. And look at the top. He's now fighting a, a jaguar. Woo, 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 rah, 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 whatever. And uh, he's going to have to wall that off. Whatever but, they uh, say. once he does that, <laughs> once he does that, he's going to be secure. It's a nice little base he set up for yeah, himself. Yeah, I'm actually surprised to see Viper walling like this. Viper's one of those players who loves to play without walls. And in tournament games, yeah, you see him putting the walls down. But this is like really heavily fortified. He's got one layer of wall out here and then another layer behind it. He's got a house wall here, which is actually probably the weakest part in the whole thing. And then he's got this like double wall with the barracks and palisade with the, then the secondary wall mm -hmm. behind it with the archery range is just so defensive um yeah and for viper i mean he knows that that's the right play to make because doubt hits castle and he's really not ready to fight and as we've said before in in wow okay look at that palisade gate right there <laughs> now you see it now you don't holy crap yeah, that, went down say, fast. <laughs> <laughs> that was insane that doubt actually could break through this pretty quickly. These houses, just 400 HP. We saw how quickly the Palisade Gate went down. Go on, Doubt. In you go. House actually a little more defensive than a Palisade Gate, I think, actually. Does the yeah. house have a higher building armor than the gate? I don't know. That gate went down really fast. It doesn't make any sense to me. No. I guess if you compare the cost, what the maybe hell? you could... Okay, right now, Viper needs a Siege Workshop and a Mangonel. That's, that's what I'm feeling. Um, he, he needs to get that down. I don't think he can afford, he can, okay, he can afford it. Yeah, and, and he's placed it, I think, as well. Where's the Siege Workshop? He hasn't researched Bodkin yet. He, it's just now coming in. Where? Or is he getting Elite Skirmisher first? Oh, elite Skirmisher, skirmisher first, so he doesn't okay. have Bodkin. Yeah. That's pretty huge. He's actually doing Skirmisher and Crossbow, so he's going to be ready to go. But that Skirmisher upgrade could be the really important difference maker here, because that's what Doubt is missing. However, Doubt has plus two, plus two. And Viper... Still only on 1-1. One, one. I don't know how I feel about Doubt's position here. I mean, I think oh, he man. ventured in a little bit too far. Viper recognized that he deleted the house foundations. He's running out now. Just giving Viper a little bit of time to get those upgrades and, and push back. Uh, da oh, gosh, I can't speak. Doubt back. <laughs> yeah, actually, that but wasn't Doubt a bad fight at all. did complete Thumb Ring. So keep oh, that in wow. mind. Okay. Doubt completed Thumb Ring. So that's expensive, and that'll really help him in the micro wars. And actually, Viper here making a university instead of a siege workshop. Um, wow. He's really going to be going for ballistics here and just stepping up the, the, the on the gas with this unit production. Interesting choice. And I think for the Viper, I mean, at the end of the day, playing as the v Vietnamese, we know that they had these really strong crossbows and skirms. Adding a couple of knights as well. Maybe this could be great, but at the same time, Doubt can very easily add camels, and we've already seen him adding them already. Um, or at least I've heard them. I've heard one. I've heard one camel. Yeah, one. And, uh, you know, he should be making some more camels to deal with these knights. But look at this forward TC from Doubt. This is another reason why I think uh, Viper could benefit from a, a siege workshop now. If he was able to start taking this hill and, and manganel this TC down, he could deny a lot of gold to, from Doubt as well. And, yeah, I feel like Doubt... Not a bad position, but Viper certainly still has ways back into this or, you know, to start putting the pressure back onto him. I'm feeling good about my casting right now because I was kind of correct. I actually think Doubt's ahead in military 
and an eco right now but viper is the one piling on the aggression but you notice he's later to each upgrade he's later to yeah. the crossbow and the skirmisher upgrade doubt didn't get elite skirmisher but he did get thumb ring he has the siege workshop up before viper viper is just now putting it up yeah viper's going to be running around and this is going to be a very important fight but i feel like doubt is just one step ahead of viper right now yeah, definitely one step ahead, but, you know, I, this is why I, th I think Viper can still kind of pull this. It, it depends how these fights go. Now we've got Manganels in the picture. It, this is where things can get really dicey. One good Manganel shot can completely turn the game around. Now, as you said, Viper is behind in military. Uh, Doubt has about 40 military units. Viper has... Uh, just 36. Actually, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. I think it's a yeah. little bit deceptive because Doubt's got his whole army together. And let's not forget, Doubt actually doesn't have skirms, but he does have the additional plus two, uh, one defense here as well. Um, yeah, right now I want to add as well, Viper on one TC still. Doubt already up to three, and we've spoke about this before already, how Doubt can very easily keep villager production going while he still goes very heavy into army, just because of how cheap those Indian villagers are. And Doubt now going for the hill. I think we're going to see the fight. This is it. Manganel's oh, shot comes in. It geez, misses. This is going to be great. Oh, Viper on the side. Huge Manganel shot. It didn't kill anything, but it did do huge damage. And Doubt there losing one Manganel already, falling back to the TC now. And don't you just think that the extra HP on these skirms and crossbows makes such a huge difference when the mangonels come into play? Especially when Doubt Viper's on the hill. Yeah, it really does. And I feel like Doubt was a little bit late with some of these upgrades. He just got his university up, so I said he was one step ahead, but he's just now clicking ballistics. That hill's so important, like you said earlier, Zach. Viper recognizing that, and he's just going to try and pressure from there. But I guess the, the question is, is Viper going to commit a lot to that, or is it just going to be a nuisance? Well, two Ooh, TCs nice. now for Viper. Also, Viper and trading two Manganels for good one trade, as yeah. well. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, and this is huge because the, the Vietnamese extra health means that if these guys are stood on the hill with their uh, melee armor and their 41 HP, they can tank a Manganel shot and then some. They're, 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 they're so strong in this position. Viper also getting a couple of vills here on the wood line. And straight away, pressuring that TC. That's what I wanted to see the Viper do a couple of minutes ago. And also, Battle Elephant hype. What's going on here, Viper? Is this the right unit choice? I don't know. I'm questioning that. I'm trying to focus on all the Maganels as well, because you can see Dow <laughs> trying to focus down this Battle Elephant, but he needs to be careful because the Maganel shot. I, I love hearing the Maganel fire into the water. Yeah. For some reason, it's just refreshing. Such a satisfying <laughs> splash, isn't it? Really nice. Exactly. Um, doubt here, though, immediately, I like this, immediately, as soon as he sees these elephants, he's like, right, camels, <laughs> this is what I do best. Yeah. Let me let me do what I do best. You know, Viper, give me a reason to make camels here. And uh, he definitely has a damn good reason now. But watch this here. Viper with a manganel. Oh, he's going to completely dodge the entire manganel shot. And there's another one. Viper, though, could have maybe attacked ground or, or maybe... Uh, moved the mangonel into a better position before firing that was pretty uh underwhelming and doubt they're gonna kill a villager that, i thought that was actually an attack ground i could be wrong but mm. that was really smart thinking doubt's like you know what i'm not gonna commit that small choke point that'd be stupid i'm gonna run back he might be able to take this house down and run in so viper's gonna have to address that as that fight still goes on on the front there's so much going on obviously this is the finals guys and this is the best of the best they have earned it Four Manganels for Doubt underneath this TC. He is not yeah. messing around at all. I was going to say that. M Manganels City here. Four Manganels for Doubt. He trades th trades it out as well. So Viper's got no more pressure coming in on the TC. And Viper's shown his hand here. The Battle Elephants, I feel like if you want the Battle Elephants to work, they have to be a surprise. You have to get like 10, 12 Battle Elephants. And then it's like surprise Battle Elephants. But what we saw was one battle elephant, and Doubt's like, oh, okay, let's just start making camels, and we can deal with this, no problem. Um, Doubt yeah. playing very defensively here, but I think it's to his uh, to his benefit. Three TCs, he's had the villager advantage now for some time, and Doubt's going to click to the Imperial Age any second. Viper, much further away, and a much more imbalanced economy, with 1,600 gold. And not really any food whatsoever. These battle elephants are expensive, man. 
they're really expensive and that's exactly what i was thinking i was like if viper's going to commit to the battle elephants he has to commit to a castle age attack i think yeah. two maganels for viper five for doubt and doubt will have the imperial age upgrade first doubt has been so comfortable here nice so comfortable and great micro there with oh, the mangonels. Here we go on the bottom side. Viper didn't notice. He's going to get hit by one mangonel shot. He'll take a lot of damage. But as we said just earlier, these guys can tank the mangonel shot if it's uphill. And do that very very comfortably as well. But still, two mangonels coming in now. Viper will lose some of these crossbows and he at least be forced back. But seriously, Viper having to build a market is he's got 2.2k gold. And he has to buy his way to the Imperial Age. That is something you never want to do in any real ideal situation. Uh, but I think he's realized that doubt's gone up and he needs to match it somehow. Zach, we're gonna see something exciting. Look in the archery ranges of doubt. Oh man, are you kidding me? Whoa. That's awesome. Wow. I'm so excited to see how this works out. The first time we've ever seen cavalry archers in this tournament or battle for Angkor. That's nuts. I mean, people just don't... And there's a lot of them uh, as well. Uh, what are the Indians looking like on the cap? Maybe you can check this for us, Nilpford, because I can't open the tech tree right now. Um, what are the upgrades looking like for the cavalry archers for the Indians? I've got a feeling they're pretty good. I, I'm sure they get party and tactics. They are good. Yeah, they, they, they are good. All, but... all the upgrades. So, yeah. Oh, in the AOC, there were only two civs which had all the upgrades. Saracens and Turks. Yeah. And it seems like Indians are... On the same level. Yeah, no, uh, they're it's... great, but I guess the downside of the cav archers has always been the cost. And doubt has been back here booming and defending wonderfully on the front this entire time. If he gets his castle up on the front and has the mobility of cav archers, Viper's in trouble. I'm so hyped to see this, seriously. Ah, uh, the backyard boom from Doubt just working so well, and these cavalry archers are going to be such a huge surprise for the Viper. Now, it's not like they're an incredibly powerful unit, or like you know that they're. they're that they're somehow super special. It's just that this is so unusual. The uh, In AOC, yeah. the only time we see cavalry archers is with the Huns, really, and sometimes the Mongols occasionally. Um, and, and this time around, like, in the expansions, the Turks have insane cavalry archers. They have, like, 100, and, uh, 100 HP, I think. They're really, really strong um, yeah, due nuts. to their unique technology. But, I mean, this is so cool to see. Indians do have very strong cavalry archers. And where are the upgrades here for Doubt? I'm not seeing heavy cavalry archer coming in yet. He's actually just upgraded light cavalry first. I like that. I think he wants to make sure that these skirmishers run back home before he sends his expensive archer units out. He has research. He's researching Arbalest, which makes perfect sense considering he has all these crossbows. And then he may go for the cav archer upgrades. But man, he has Bracer right now. Chemistry has not been researched yet. The trebuchet is already out. And Viper, just like in the beginning of the Castle Age, he is hiding underneath his TC. Yeah, Viper, though, now just completing Arbalest himself. These Vietnamese are blessed, are very strong, 48 health, um, pretty pretty formidable. And in the siege workshop here, a couple of mangonels, nothing too special going on over there. Viper with a few monks here, maybe he's anticipating some uh, of those Imperial camels, perhaps. That's something that the uh, Indians have a, as a unique unit, and they're very, very strong in the late game. But right now, Doubt, great control of the map. He's got the uh, castle up already, as you said, the treb out, and he's building another castle on this hill, securing him yet another stone mine. I'm feeling so good for doubt right now. I, I just cannot wait to see uh, Viper's reaction when all these cavalry archers come flooding at him, and out they come as well. Yeah, it's obviously going to be a surprise for Viper. I do want to point out, as this castle is being contested, those three monks that went above Viper's base all went for three relics, so okay. they're all going to get those relics. So that'll be a huge deal. That hill's so important, and Doubt has been pushed off of it. Arbalest, Cav Archers. Yeah, Doubt's Jeez, just what biding his time. He's biding his time. He's doing elite skirmisher. He's he's, he's like, okay, well, we, we, he's got to stop the castle from going down. He's got 1,000 health, and it's going down pretty quick with these mangonels behind yeah. it. Uh, if he loses the castle, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world for him. I don't think he's going to be that bothered. Because he, he knows that he's got a huge mass of units back here. He's just waiting for those upgrades. And there's the Heavy Cavalry Archer upgrade coming in now. Exciting stuff. This. Yeah, I think so too, actually. It's a little risky. 
Maybe he's going to delete it at the last second so that Viper wastes time attacking. Oh, no, no, he's rushing out. He's going to try and complete it. Okay. Oh, boy. Yeah, there's the Vils. And he's pushing out, coming up to the hill. The Cavalry Archers from the back are going to move in as well. And the Heavy Cavalry Archer upgrade's going to pop in any second now. And Viper's just going to be like, whoa. This army's just come he out of nowhere. He is not expecting this. This is insane. Viper with a huge lack of units here versus uh, versus Doubt. Doubt with a couple of nice Manganel shots in there as well. And those Cavalry Archers on the hill, so incredibly strong. 80 HP versus the 48 of the Arbalest. And I think even though Doubt will uh, lose his villagers building the castle, he will secure this hill and he will secure this fight because Viper's lost everything, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Destroyed. It's over. He's been destroyed it's by over. the Cav Archers. <laughs> wow, Doubt. Did not see that coming. Could have not possibly seen that coming. What a game. What an absolute beast <laughs> of a game. Love it. You know what? <laughs> I'm happy that we've talked about the element of surprise so many times where players have shown their stable too early or their elephants too early in this case. I'm really happy that Doubt sent out the Cav Archers and was able to win in one big fight because Viper had no time to prepare. That was beautiful play from Doubt. Incredible stuff. And uh, that was game number one. This is a best of five, guys. We've still got potentially four more games to come. And Doubt is going to take this first game as well versus the Viper here. What a great enjoyable game and honestly every time we see the indians i'm impressed they they have a really broad tech tree they've got so many options they have an insane economy thanks to those cheaper villagers but not only that it's just the, the way that they play they can play so aggressively and still boom at the same time and it just it, it makes it so difficult to predict what's going on if you're in the viper's position you're like oh well yeah. how how hard is he booming back there i don't know he's he's making a lot of a, a military against a normal standard sieve i'd assume he's maybe on one or two tcs not three tc full boom and suddenly doubt just out of nowhere boom heavy cavalry archers and Viper's just overwhelmed. Amazing, amazing game. Yeah, it was great. And it was great to see Viper go on the offensive there because we said, mm. okay, Viper's not comfortable with this. So he tried to go on that hill and doubt the master of defending and booming and finishing <laughs> wins game one. That was yeah. great. Amazing. I like that. I love the Viper 9999's fan in the, in the chat. He's like Bible thumb. Fire, fire, Bible <laughs> thumb. Uh, he's, he's got plenty of time for a comeback. Okay, so let's... I, I want to keep the hype going, so I want to go straight into the next game. Um, do you want to do the Civ Draft, or should we just go straight into it? I feel like the Civ Draft adds an awful lot to it, because we've seen okay. a lot of these Civs, so I feel like we should talk to the viewers about like why players might prefer this, because I thought that Dow had the advantage going into this with Indian. So I think we should definitely do that. Okay, absolutely. I agree with you. And uh, let's just do the Civ draft straight away here then. Um, okay. Okay, so are you...